The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. Allow me to read you the story of the rich man and Lazarus. What I want you to take note of is the speed in which his transition from this world into hell was. Luke chapter 16 verse 19 through 31. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded though one rose from the dead. Verse 22 and 23 is what I want to focus on for just one moment. The rich man also died and was buried in Hades where he was in torment. In an instant, the rich man woke up in Hades. Words cannot describe the complete and utter shock the rich man experienced. He was quite literally living the high life one second, and a moment later, he was in Hades. I am sure that he was surprised to see where he was. And the unfortunate thing is a lot of people will also be surprised where they spend eternity. It is a sobering thought how close we are to eternity. As humans, we live with this false sense of security that eternity is a million miles away, but there is but a step between either heaven or hell. The answer is Jesus. Mark chapter 8 verse 36 to 38. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. A man can hardly gain the whole world. And if he gains it, the Bible says it will profit nothing to him if he loses his soul thereafter. There is nothing in this world that anyone can give in exchange for his soul. Pursuing the things of this world will only result to vain toils. But when a person has Jesus, he gets satisfied, even with whatever little possession he has. When you have Jesus, you can sleep at night with the assurance of where you are going. What more can a person ask for than to know that one day I am going to heaven. One day I am going to be with Jesus. One day I am going to walk on the streets of pure gold. When you have Jesus, you have peace with God. Romans chapter 5 verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus.
Jesus Christ. What more can a person ask for than to have peace with God? I am okay with this world hating me. I am okay with society being angry with me. I am okay with being an outcast and the world not being at peace with me. But there's one person I want peace with, is God. Now that is amazing. Being at peace with the one who holds my next breath. Now that is amazing. Being at peace with the one who holds my next heartbeat in his hands. Now that is amazing. Being at peace with the one who has the whole world in his hands. I am glad that I have peace with God through Jesus Christ. God is smiling at me. God is pleased with me. I sleep better knowing that at night that God and I were at peace with one another. Jesus is the answer. Wealth does not satisfy. Fame does not satisfy. Power will not save a person's soul from being lost. There is a reality beyond this physical realm where the things of this world are valueless. Your political status on earth will not bail you out when you die. You cannot buy heaven with the stacks of your bank account. Your fame on earth will not give you an audience in heaven. Jesus is the answer. He is the only one that can make your life count after this world. And he is the only one who can bring peace between you and God. Not one person enters heaven without being at peace with God. Life on earth is short, but God promised us eternal bliss, which no one can access outside of Christ. Jesus is the answer for the world today. There is no salvation in any other apart from Christ. A life without Christ is a life in crisis. What are you seeking for in Christ? The peace you need is in Christ. The satisfaction you long for is in Christ. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 commands us to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness first. Then all other things will be added to us. The answer that unlocks all other things is Jesus Christ. You can never get the other things if you don't have Christ. Unbelievers could have wealth but they do not have satisfaction. Being wealthy can raise your standard of living, but it can't grant you peace with God. The rich man in Luke chapter 16 verse 19 through 31 closed his eyes in death and opened it to an eternal reality where he saw his wretchedness. He learned that Jesus is the answer only when it was too late to repent. His appeal was that someone would go from paradise to warn his relatives. This message is directly such kind of warning. Jesus is all you need. Whatever you do on earth, outside of Christ will perish in this world. Let Jesus guide your life. Let him be your Lord and Savior. Live for him here on earth so that you can live with him there in eternity. The greatest problem of humanity is sin. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 affirms that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The question of sin was answered by him. Jesus is the answer. Romans chapter 10 verse 11 through 13 says, The scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.